What's happening, people? How are we all doing? So, two bacons bashed up inside HMP Forest Bank. So, this is the news I'm talking about in this episode where an inmate from a normal location wing, which is, I'm sorry, which was B wing inside of Forest Bank, has snuck on the D wing which is the S Offender Wings, which houses the Bacons, the Romans, whatever you want to call them. So there is a massive investigation into this, looking into how he actually got onto those wings, or onto that wing. Now HMP Forest Bank is a Category B private prison in, HMP, in, sorry, in Manchester. And HMP Forest Bank has hit the headlines a lot recently, more so over the past year for the amount of drug use that's happening inside of the prison. The prisoners are running the wings. Um, in terms of being a prisoner inside of that jail, the cons love it. They've all got phones. Everyone's running around off the nuts. And that's what the majority of prisoners like to do, believe it or not, inside a prison, to fill in their time. So getting down to the story, so what has happened on, this was September the 16th, only less than four weeks ago, where this prisoner has been escorted back to the wings, and he's actually said he was on day wing so that he could get in there and attack the S offenders, the Bacons. So as he's been getting escorted back, now I'm not sure on the layout or the ins, up, ins and outs, about Forest Bank. Sometimes in the prisons, when you're getting escorted, sometimes the screws will drop you at the gate and they'll let you run up to the wings yourself or when they open the gates. Like I say, it depends on which prison you're in. You can go back from visits back to your wing where sometimes it's corridors or sometimes obviously you're fenced in and you can go back to your wing. He's obviously took a detour and he's went to D-Wing, where they've let him in. And sometimes, depending again on which prison you're in, you rattle on the gates outside the doors, the screws look through the sea, they'll come and open the door, let you in. He's obviously been let onto the wing, and he's trying to blend in. He's went into one of the pods, smashed the fuck out of one of the bacons, give him a proper beating, went and set about another bacon before the alarm bells have went off. And the screws have come running. But before he's ended up getting wrapped up, he has actually given these bacons the lickings of their lives. He's given them such a ferocious beating. One of them nearly, he ended up down healthcare, but he nearly ended up needing hospital treatment. But they decided against it. And they just left him in the prison with his injuries. And they give him a couple of paracetamol for his bad head. <laughs> That's about as much as you get in prison. But just as what the Bacons deserve. Because in prison, all the lads that are in there on normal locations are fucking dying to get their hands on the Bacons. Doesn't matter where, which prison you're in, what type of prisoner you are, if you're on your main location and you see one of these beasties and you've got a chance of attacking one of them, they get attacked on sight. But obviously, Mr. X, the sneaky fucker, is when sneak snuck on the wings and gave these bacons the beatings of their lives. But like I say, he's been wrapped up. They've realised he's not from that wing when they've took him down the block. And as you can imagine, the governor is doing his fucking nut, thinking how the hell has this happened? There's going to be a massive inquiry. The bacons will probably be wanting to press charges because that's what type of creatures they are. It's alright when they're inflicting injuries on kids or whatever. But then when they get a taste of their own justice, they're straight onto the coppers putting in claims or whatever. And that's what's happening here. So there's going to be an inquiry in the lad. They'll be getting there, uh, probably get charged. And like I say, most of these prisons are camera up to fucking bits. So the majority of the attack will probably be on camera. Far from the one I think we went inside the cell, which obviously there's no cameras inside the cells. So 
and there might be a little bit of leeway on trying to get out of that one. But the other one that was out on the landing will be on camera and they probably will try and make an example of him because he's made the prison look like an absolute or made the prison staff look like absolute fools, which a lot of them are. But um, he's going to be getting up in court before long. Because like I say, there's an inquiry going on. The screws that let him onto the wing will be banging trouble. And like I mentioned, the governor will be doing his nut because the prison is in the news that much. And then an incident like this, again, it hasn't been on mainstream media, as in on the TV. But it is in a few of the local papers, and I have getting some information from people inside Forest Bank. But um, nobody knows who these Bacons are. It doesn't say nothing in the papers, and the people that asked me or mentioned it to me sent us a message telling us to look into the story. They didn't actually know who the Bacon was. Obviously, the lad that done them in will find out because when he gets or when he's been interviewed off the coppers, which he will be, you'll be getting outside charges, took to the police station, and then they'll be telling them exactly who they are, and then you'll be able to find out what they were in for. But again, every prisoner on normal location is looking for the opportunity to get at these beasts. When I was in Durham, uh, when I first went in on the IPP, this was going back a while now, 2006. In there, everyone was mixed in together. There was no protection wings for them. It was all mixed in. And there's not many prisons like that now, but that one, they were all mixed in. So when it came out in the papers, at the time, obviously, when you're reading the Evening Chronicle, because some of the lads used to get the paper every Thursday, and when you were flicking through it, some people would obviously sometimes just chuck a paper under your door and mark a page out, Knowing that fine well, when you see what that person was in for, they're going to get attacked on association. I did attack a few nonces myself when I was in Durham. On because when I was there, went to Durham, C Wing was the induction wing back in 2006. It's a small, we're one of the smallest wings in the prison, and a lot of the beasties actually stayed on that wing. Some of them actually got jobs as clean as one of them that went unnoticed was a one called Seymour. He was from Newcastle, absolute bacon. He uh, he was doing a four-year IPP. I remember when it was in the it was in the paper, doing a four-year IPP for doing something to his daughter's best friend. And obviously, I'm not going to go into details, but you can imagine what I'm talking about. And he got a four-year IPP. But when we found out about it, I was torturing him. I was going to his pad because he got banged up behind his door. He went on hunger strike. But uh, when I was getting out, because I ended up getting a job on the cleaners myself, obviously, he got off the cleaners when everyone found out about him. And then I got a job on the cleaners, but I was going to his door when everyone else was banged up banging on his door, griefing the life out of him, saying he was going to get done when he came out. And he was absolutely petrified, just the way we wanted him to be. Absolute beast of a man. Fucking, you can only imagine how petrified that poor young lass was when he... Because he was quite a big, stocky bloke. He wasn't very tall, but he was stocky. So you can imagine how petrified that poor young lass was when he was on top of her, doing these despicable acts. So, like I say, I mean, a few of the cleaners were going to his door, torturing him when he was on hunger strike, and he was absolutely petrified. But uh, there was another one who got booted down the stairs in Durham when I was there. He was walking up the stairs. We were walking down towards the servery to get our tea. He was supposed to wait until they come up, but we're seeing that it was him coming up. So we went down and decided to boot him back down the stairs. But again, that's what the beasties deserve. He was another one who got IPP for doing horrible deeds to young boys. But again, they deserve it. And they should all be still mixed in now. It might make them think twice, because they're gonna know what they're gonna get off the other lads on normal location when they land in the prison. But now they're on protection, they're on the VP wings, the vulnerable prisoner wing, which is a disgrace calling them vulnerable, because they're anything but vulnerable, they're fucking predators. 
but uh, they're all kept separate now. But there is a couple of prisons in Wakefield, is one of them which is a high security prison, but that is predominantly S offenders. But in there, there has been quite a few bacons being served up properly. And one of them was that Roy Whiten. I will do another video on him separately. But Roy Whiten was attacked of Gary Vinter, who was a massive bloke, horrible bloke, but he was massive. He uh, beat the living shit out of Roy Whiten, went in his pad, stamped all over him. I'm surprised his brains didn't come out. He stamped on him that much. And he only stopped the attack because he was out of breath. I, uh, obviously, if he didn't get out of breath, Whiten would no longer be breathing. But Roy Whiten is the monster that killed five-year-old Sarah Payne. And he deserved every bit of that beating. But Vinder also got a toilet brush, which he'd sharpened up after he'd stamped all over him and done his beating and stabbed his eye out. And he's uh, blind in one eye. The horrible beast what he is. One of the worst ever. One of the most hated in the system, that man. Not even just in the system, in the whole country. Because Roy Whiten is an absolute animal. And he's been attacked on a few occasions. And hopefully it will get attacked some more before he's there. Uh, before he hits the coffin. But I just thought I'd bring that to your attention, people. Because I know he is a loving listening to these stories. I should actually rename the channel Bacon Bashers. <laughs> and just do videos predominantly talking about Bacons getting bashed in prison, get their own justice, because that's what you love watching. And I love telling you the stories. <laughs> but anyways, I'll leave that one there for now, people. But I will be doing more stories on these predators who become vulnerable and let you all have a chuckle at their misfortune and becoming on the other end of the receiving, or coming on the receiving end of a bit of justice. But I'll leave that one there for now, people. And if you are enjoying the content, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Take care, everyone.